So Ryan is a lecturer in marketing at the University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. He's an 11 year veteran of social media and digital marketing with a bachelor's in marketing from the University of Georgia and a master's in digital marketing from East Tennessee State University. He has extensive experience in crafting powerful digital strategies, growing active online communities and generating engaging, consistent digital advertising with both agency and brand experience Ryan has guided B2B and B2C brands through all stages of development. He's the CEO of Lyft Media Group, a marketing and consulting agency with a focus on ROI-driven strategy and execution for clients around the world. Ryan is a, the proud husband of, of Sarah, father of Emily and Andrew. He has the best dog ever, Jack. All right, welcome, Ryan. We're super excited to hear from you today. Go ahead and take it away. Thanks so much, Adam. Guys, it, it, it sincerely is a pleasure to get to uh, to speak with so many of my colleagues uh, today about uh, a subject that I'm incredibly passionate about, uh, which is my professional career. Um, I, I'm really fortunate uh, that uh, I get to wear a couple of different hats uh, in my professional life. Um, you know, as as I, I get to share with the student team all the time, and I know you guys feel uh, as well. Uh, my students are the passion of my career. Um, nothing makes my, my heart light up more than uh, getting to celebrate a student's first job uh, with them um, and, and, and getting to see those light bulbs click on uh, when they're learning new content for the first time. Uh, one of the other thing that, uh, things that occupies my time, though, um, is, as, as Adam shared, I'm the CEO uh, and Chief Growth Officer of Lyft Media Group. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, what Lyft Media Group is uh, during uh, during this session, uh, but I frequently get asked the question: How do you how do you run uh, a marketing agency and still have time for your students? How do you how do you uh, run uh, you know a, a a great business and have time for research? How do you how do you have time to be a good colleague at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga and serve your team and your clients uh, with uh, with the attention that they deserve? Um, and so I wanted to share some of those things with you guys today. Um, and how, how you can do this uh, as well. Let's get started. All right, let me get into presenter mode here. And we're off. Awesome, guys. So uh, as, as I've shared, this is, uh, this is me, uh, at, 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 you know, professor at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Um, and I wanna talk about how we can connect with industry opportunities. I was intentionally a little bit vague uh, with that title, because uh, not everyone uh, wants to be a business owner. Not everyone uh, has the uh, desire or drive to be a, an entrepreneur. Your drive and desire might be uh, simply in another area. I still think that industry opportunities uh, present a massive opportunity for you um, to not only enrich yourselves, uh, but to enrich the lives of your students as well. All right, so uh, what, are we, what are we hoping to learn uh, today on this? I want you to understand the benefits of, of why, uh, you know, understand why the benefits uh, and, 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 and pivotal opportunities uh, exist in these industry opportunities. Why is this so important uh, to my life? Why do I be, uh, feel like it's so important for your professional life uh, as well? I want you to understand who are the most important benefactors when you pursue these industry opportunities because there are a lot more benefactors uh, when you pursue professional industry opportunities outside of the classroom uh, than you might originally think. And then I wanna help you strike the inspiration of how to get started. Uh, I know this is a very daunting thing um, to essentially launch a, a, a secondary career. Um, I, I like to view mine as not even a secondary career, uh, that it's just, it, it's just my professional life. I want you to understand how uh, to get started uh, in this. Let's kick, let's kick off uh, and talk about why community involvement, why these industry uh, opportunities are, are so uh, enjoyable. Uh, the first reason I think that they're so enjoyable is because it gives us joy. Um, there's been this naughty little secret uh, uh, that I, I think has become pervasive uh, in, the, in the world over the past several years as we've talked about work-life balance. And we pretend as if our professional careers are this nasty uh, thing that we always have to beat back against um, and uh, in, in favor of 
uh, you know, our, our, our home lives. I'm here to tell you that it's okay to like your job. Um, it's okay to like uh, this uh, professional involvement uh, and the fulfillment you get from uh, being involved uh, in, in your job, whether that's uh, in education at the secondary uh, level. I, I've taught at the middle school. I've taught at the high school level. Uh, I'm now serving at the University of Tennessee uh, at Chattanooga. It's okay to like those things. And it's also okay to like your job as well uh, in consulting. Uh, these are good things. Um, you know, when, when we're really, you know, working at our best is when we're working in our desire zone. This is an outstanding concept uh, that Michael Hyatt has spoken on uh, extensively throughout the years, as well as Megan Hyatt Miller, uh, who's the CEO of, of Michael Hyatt and Company. And the desire zone is when our passion and our proficiency uh, really line up. Uh, there are four zones of productivity where, uh, you know, and, and the desire zone is when we're at our most productive. It's when our proficiency and our passion align with one another. When I'm not passionate about something, when I don't want to do it, uh, and I'm not very good at it, that's my drudgery zone. Tasks seem like they take forever um, in this zone. In the disinterest zone, I might be really, uh, really, really good at it, but I hate doing it. Um, you know, you, you wear out really quickly um, in zone three right here. You're really good at it, right? And you feel like you should do it uh, a whole lot. For many of you, this is research. Uh, for many of you, this is even teaching your students uh, that you're really good at it. You're really good in the classroom, but, but, but it's not as fulfilling. Uh, maybe as it used to be. Then we have the distraction zone. Uh, the distraction zone uh, is when I'm, I, I love doing something. I love doing it. I'm, I'm really passionate about it, you know, but I'm not very good at it. <laughs> Where we should be living uh, 80 to 90% of our time uh, is in that desire zone. When our passion and our proficiency uh, align with one another. I've gone through this exercise with my team at Lyft Media Group and even some of my students that I mentor outside of the classroom. Um, I don't mind sharing a few of mine with you. I know that it'll uh, appear backward um, on this, but to share a few of my, uh, my zone items. In my desire zone, teaching is in my desire zone. I absolutely love being in the classroom uh, with my students. Uh, at at uh, Lyft Media Group, in my desire zone. Uh, selling is in my uh, desire zone. Uh, coaching my team uh, and leading the big picture vision uh, for my organization is in my desire zone. Things that are in my distraction zone are things like writing emails, keeping up with my email content. That's why I've hired an executive assistant to help me out uh, with just things like that. Things that, you know, I actually like doing it. I like communicating with clients, um, but I'm not always very good at it. My disinterest zone, um, creating proposals on this. I'm good at it. I hate doing it so much. Uh, creating our, our financial reports uh, at our organization. That's why I have a partner uh, that I love and trust because Jasper creates those for me. And then the drudgery zone, um, any type of uh, extensive grading uh, that happens. That's why I have to devote a lot of time on the front end to creating my, my rubrics and my outlines for students because I, I like to create a system around grading as opposed to just freestyling this thing. It's better for me, it's better for my students uh, and things like that. Why else is community involvement so important? Uh, accountability and the respect of your students. Uh, what I love about uh, working at Lyft Media Group and leading my team uh, at Lyft Media Group is that I have to stay accountable to my students to remain at the top of my industry. Uh, if I'm not remaining uh, at the top of my industry, I won't have a successful business. And if I'm not remaining at the top of my industry, my students are gonna get, aren't going to get the best version of me that they possibly can be. When I run my business at Lyft Media Group and when I do a good job at it, I'm remaining accountable to my students by do, doing my absolute best to make sure that they are getting the best value humanly possible uh, that they can get out of their marketing classes at UTC. I'm also, uh, I've realized that I've gained the respect uh, a lot too. Uh, when my students know that uh, I'm, I'm walking what I'm talking, uh, right? When they know that uh, I'm doing this on a day-to-day -day basis, for people who are paying my organization money to handle their marketing strategies, I get a new level of respect for them because they know 
they know that I'm actually doing this uh, on a on a day to day basis. Why else is community involvement important? And the third reason I think is variety. There's this interesting self defeating treadmill effect uh, of research that can really fall uh, uh, make a lot of professors make a lot of teachers uh, fall uh, victim and lead to a lot of extensive burnout. What do I mean by uh, the treadmill effect on this? The treadmill effect, guys, um, is is the nature of, of what happens when uh, you're a high achiever. If you're familiar with uh, the strengths finders assessments, if you're an achiever um, on this, uh, we're very prone to this treadmill effect. Because work is all about completing goals, especially because research is all about completing goals, right? You start your research and then eventually you're published. Um, you know, in a way, because work is all about achieving goals, it's also self-defeating in a way when you achieve those goals, right? Finishing a big accomplishment um, can feel fulfilling, and yet at the same time, it can be a letdown. We hear often of Olympic athletes that after they, they achieve that gold medal, uh, after they achieve that silver medal, after they achieve that, that bronze medal, that the next season of their life, they have to deal uh, with an identity crisis or a, a lack of fulfillment that because they, they achieved this mountaintop experience. You know, and so what happens to us oftentimes when we make one of these big accomplishments, when we make one of these big achievements, is we do the obvious thing. We find another goal, we find another research topic, and we set off and start doing it again. We go from accomplishment to accomplishment to accomplishment. And it's very easy to be left unfulfilled and burned out because we're just chasing uh, the next dopamine rush of getting published. Community involvement helps us diversify and provide a little bit of variety so that you can accomplish different things uh, when we're doing this. And finally, community involvement is uh, important because it pays off quite often, literally. I wanna walk through a few uh, strategies at the end of this for how professors can literally be paid uh, for what they're doing, how I've literally uh, seen uh, significant financial benefit from being involved in my community. It doesn't just pay off financially, but uh, it, it, pervades, uh, it pays off uh, emotionally, spiritually, mentally stimulating as well uh, for me. Let's keep going. Guys, I firmly believe that the time that you spend outside of the classroom on yourself in professional development, not necessarily on research, but the time that you spend outside of your classroom on other professional involvements, even if it's avocational involvement outside of the classroom, can have the largest impact inside of your classroom on your students. I felt for a long time that if my work was not singularly focused, laser focused on my students, uh, that it would fail to benefit me. You know, I've learned through my professional development, I've learned through my involvement, that when I work on myself, when I bring a, a more holistic Ryan Russell to the classroom, my students are among the primary benefactors uh, that receive this. When, when I'm more professionally fulfilled, uh, my, my university uh, receives a significant amount of benefit. My community at large uh, receives a better uh, benefit when I'm fulfilled professionally. All right, so way number one uh, that I want you to be more involved in your community, that you can be more involved and connect to industry opportunities is to be an active member of a mastermind group or to receive business coaching uh, from a business coach. And this is coaching, guys, that uh, that I would say uh, should, should go beyond uh, simply in the education space uh, to, to become an active member of a professional uh, industry mastermind group or to receive uh, business coaching. So what is a mastermind group? Because the term has been thrown out increasingly over the past few years as a few of these have started to uh, take hold. A mastermind group is a combination of brainstorming, uh, professional education, and peer accountability and support all in a group uh, uh, setting. I include executive coaching in the benefits of this because the benefits are often largely the same. There's simply something that happens when we get among like-minded people, especially when they're parallel organizations. They're not other teachers. These are parallel organizations though that are dealing and struggling with very similar problems. And the synergy that happens when they can uh, bounce ideas off of you and you can bounce ideas off of them, it's really powerful. 
what a mastermind group is not. A mastermind group is not another advisory board. A mastermind group is not singularly focused at only helping one individual. A mastermind group is for the benefit of everyone in these groups. I'm a huge fan of advisory boards uh, for professors and, and high school teachers as well. Uh, advisory boards guides are, are, are when uh, a group of industry professionals feed into you specifically for what your students need and what your classroom, uh, what would benefit your classroom. A mastermind group is not what I'm talking about as it pertains to that. Uh, a mastermind group is where you are there for those uh, professionals just as much as they are there for you. A mastermind group is not simply made up of a group of professors uh, or other educators. Um, while I think that those things are incredibly important to support one another, to trade ideas off of uh, for, for the benefit of your research opportunities and for the benefit of classroom opportunities, I'm a part of some of those groups, guys. Stukit has done an amazing job, especially through things like ProfCon, to connect me with other professors to benefit my skills in the classroom. But that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about getting in a group with other entrepreneurs and, 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 and business owners and other marketing professionals uh, that can benefit your career just to, and you benefit their career as well. A mastermind group is not simply going to another conference, though mastermind groups often attend conferences to, together. Excuse me. Um, I, I love conferences. ProfCon is one of the best. Um, and it, it's outstanding to meet other, uh, other teachers uh, at these things. Uh, guys, but, but a mastermind group is more in the weeds. It's the day-to-day -day problems that it can help us solve that really present a lot of power. Highly encourage you to be uh, involved uh, in these. So how do mastermind groups, how does executive coaching uh, benefit you as a teacher? First is the deep active networking opportunities uh, that you get. You'll be amazed at how many new people you'll meet and that benefits you directly into the classroom, whether it's in the form of guest speakers, whether it's important pieces of information about where the industry is going that you can bring to the classroom. Uh, the active networking opportunities for developing your own outside of the classroom professional career to introduce you to new people in, uh, in your area or in your industry, uh, that's incredibly important. Meeting new people is vital to your success um, whether we're talking about you're in the classroom career or you're out of the classroom career. It benefits you by making an active contribution to the lives of other people. Uh, guys, we all know, and, and I know that uh, part of the reason that all of us are teachers is because we love the impact that we can make on others. When we're a part of a mastermind group and help bear one another's burdens uh, in, in terms of other leaders, that contribution feels really, really good. It feels really good uh, when the spotlight is not always on ourselves, when we can focus on uh, others, especially when it's at that high level uh, of other leaders, other marketing leaders um, on this, making that active contribution in their lives can be really important and really fulfilling to help combat that treadmill effect uh, that happens in achievement only inside of the classroom or in our research. It benefits you by the new perspectives that uh, it can bring through others' unique active experiences. Uh, they might be dealing something uh, with something at their, at their business, um, in their marketing lives. You would have had no idea is, is even happening, uh, but for your involvement uh, with them. It's been fascinating for me uh, to walk along, uh, walk along some folks inside of my master, uh, uh, mastermind group uh, who are dealing with the, the housing crisis that's happening. Uh, in our country right now, the shortage of, uh, of, of housing that's happening and how real estate investors are, are dealing with this and, and the different uh, forms of, of marketing that uh, they're having to do as the space of, of real estate investing is growing. You know, I, I see a lot of stuff, uh, big picture through, you know, ad age and through my involvement at my uh, business. But this is a side of marketing I would have had no idea about uh, that I can now bring to my students and now benefits me at, at Lyft Media Group as well uh, because of the active experience of people in my mastermind group. I can receive specific, specific advice and specific professional education that I otherwise would not get. When I bring my problems uh, and, and have to put on my vulnerable uh, coat before I go to my mastermind uh, meeting, uh, they can give me very specific advice about the problems uh, that I'm dealing with and recommend uh, specific forms of professional education 
that are directly related uh, to what I need and what I want inside and outside of the classroom. My mastermind group challenges me uh, and holds me accountable. I'll share with you one of the ways that uh, they hold me uh, accountable. One of the things that I do to help me uh, in my professional life is I keep, uh, I, I use the full focus planner for my uh, productivity uh, and, and to keep me on track uh, at, at winning at work and succeeding at life. Um, and in my mastermind group, the way that we hold each other accountable to make sure that we're abiding by this system is if we miss one day in our uh, uh, filling out our full focus planner of, of what our big three items for that day are going to be, or whether uh, what our, our, our big goals for the week are going to be, we literally have to light a dollar on fire uh, in front of the, uh, of the group for every day. It's challenging for me because I have to find cash in order to light on fire. Um, but, uh, you know, it, 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 I, I've only had to do it once because I know that I have to stay accountable uh, to these guys and girls uh, in my mastermind group uh, to stay accountable to, to being productive and to accomplishing my goals uh, in the classroom and outside of the classroom. There's something important, guys, about community support as well uh, for your students. I know that we are always passionate about bringing uh, the community into our classrooms uh, at, at UTC, and I know that it's important for you. Uh, when your mastermind group is, uh, is involved in that, it's much easier uh, to make new connections to bring them in the classroom, and then to provide you feedback and help brainstorm new ideas uh, with your group. Uh, these guys and girls can have different perspectives uh, than you ever would have because of their learned experience, because of their different life perspectives uh, on this. And so when you can provide diverse feedback, diverse brainstorming in this group that has nothing to do uh, with education, it can be a very powerful thing. My personal experiences. I want to uh, uh, brag on my my coach right now, a gentleman named Jonathan Bards, uh, lives in Nashville. I've had the pleasure of only, I've only met him one time because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, but Jonathan has helped coach me uh, on how other leaders are incorporating their marketing into their business plans. We predominantly talk about Lyft Media Group, but what he does an amazing job with me uh, is, is connecting what I'm doing in the office to what I'm doing in the classroom uh, as well and helps me bridge those gaps uh, because he has the benefit, I call it the benefit of ignorance. Uh, if you're a football fan, it's kind of like why the offensive coordinator sits up in the press box. Uh, because they get the benefit of not having uh, big, giant, sweaty guys all around them and the noise of the crowd and things like that. They get to focus and see the game from a different perspective so they can call the shots differently. It's amazing uh, the connections that he's able to make uh, with me on this. He's also helped guide me on, uh, on work-life balance strategies uh, so that I'm winning at work and I'm succeeding at life. It's what Michael Hyatt calls the double win. Uh, Tag Thompson is my mastermind coordinator. Um, and has done an absolutely phenomenal job of developing groups uh, that are diverse in their life perspectives and diverse in their business uh, in, in their business experience as well, uh, so that we can all help each other. Uh, like I said, he helps me stay accountable so that I can achieve goals, provides me with ample cross-training opportunities, is a continuing, educa uh, a continuing education resource for me, provides me encouragement and humility. It's not very fun to know that you've got to bring a dollar bill and light it on fire in front of other people. Uh, it's a humbling experience when you have to admit uh, to a group of people that you failed on, on your goals, uh, but to be supported by them and help them. Uh, and, and when they help bring you back, it's a very powerful thing. You know, what else they helped me with specifically in the classroom is that people in various industries can tell me what uh, they wish my students were learning. And Ryan, I wish that they taught this about marketing in, uh, in, in, in college on this. It helps with two ways. First of all, I get to tell them what we are teaching. And a lot of times what they wish that they, uh, our students were learning, they actually are learning. Uh, maybe they're just not asking the right question. And then they're helping me implement new things uh, into my classroom curriculum and to recommend things to my colleagues at UTC as well. A few quick tidbits on how to get started. Uh, I came to Coach Barnes through the Michael Hyatt Business Accelerated Program. Uh, absolutely love it. Dave Ramsey's Entree Leadership Program uh, is also very, very good. Uh, as far as my online community that helps me with Facebook advertising, uh, knowledge that uh, I get to incorporate some of my uh, classroom in. I, I spoke about this at, at PropCon uh, last year, uh, as well as the, the Power Hitters Club from John Loomer, a very great uh, Facebook advertising uh, coach on this. 
And then Tag Thompson's uh, program for business coaching, you can find it at the URL realfounders.io. Another way that I think that is incredibly important uh, is, to, uh, is to become a mentor. And I'm not just talking about hanging around after class for a few minutes. These are extra opportunities that only a select few students uh, opt in. And maybe it's even folks outside uh, of, of, uh, uh, of your classroom. I've had the pleasure of meeting students from other colleges and universities uh, in the Chattanooga area or friends of my students uh, who were also in the industry. Uh, and a select few I've, come, uh, I've chosen to become a mentor to them. And I'm also passionate about the ways that other organizations have developed mentorship programs that I'd like to share that I've gotten involved with as well. So why should you become a mentor uh, when, uh, when what we're trying to talk about is to connect you with industry opportunities? Well, the first thing is I think that there's power in non-achievement on all of this. I'm not necessarily uh, fulfilling a, a, a goal on this. Uh, and that feels good a lot of times. We all know the rewarding experience that happens with teaching. Uh, mentor mentorship turns the volume uh, up on, on this impact that you have. When you get to walk alongside uh, someone and extend the knowledge that you've gained over the course of your career to them. Why else should you become a mentor? Well, because you'll learn more uh, about your career as well. Studies from the University of Georgia, go dogs, uh, show the magnitude uh, of the effects of students learning by teaching. That means that they learn something and then teach it to someone else, uh, that there's a change of 0.77. Uh, 0.5 on this scale is when it, it, it raises their grade in a higher letter grade. Guys, it happens the same exact way when we mentor other people. You will learn more about the marketing industry when you mentor someone else. Uh, what, what else I would add to that uh, 0.2 here is, uh, guys, you don't have to know everything. Uh, in order to be a, a mentor. It's, uh, you, you don't have to have the market cornered on, on great ideas. You don't have to know everything. But when you can learn and then communicate and teach someone else uh, on this, it provides you with immense learning benefits. You'd be amazed at how much uh, your professional development will grow when you mentor uh, that individual. It provides you with extensive benefits uh, as well. Uh, as your mentee, the, per, the, the, the uh, boy, girl that uh, you're mentoring grows in his or her professional career, guess what? Their network now becomes your network. Um, and it's provided me a significant amount uh, of, of connections uh, as the folks that I've mentored have, have grown up. Uh, a few of them I've hired at Lyft Media Group as they con and continued uh, their professional education. Lyft Media Group has won clients, several clients, uh, because folks I've mentored, uh, the companies that they now work for, uh, they trust my marketing knowledge and they've chosen to hire our organization. I haven't done it in a selfish way. Certainly wasn't expecting that. Uh, but as I've grown in their trust, uh, they trust me uh, as, as a marketing strategist. And so they're bringing their professional work opportunities to me on that. It provides you with creative energy as well. Uh, like I said, one of the greatest things that I, I get to see in the classroom is when you see those light bulbs come on uh, with your students, you know, that happens uh, in, in mentorship meetings uh, as well. When I sit down over coffee uh, with a young man or a young woman uh, and you get to see them rekindle the passion uh, for their career. One of the individuals, uh, a, a young man named Clay, just got a new job, uh, his, his, his first uh, venture into uh, the marketing industry. His first job didn't work out for him. It wasn't a great cultural fit. Uh, at the organization uh, that he worked for. And he just got an awesome job at a, at a venture capital uh, organization in their marketing team. Man, the, the, the energy that I got when he called me with that great news was absolutely outstanding. And finally, I believe it develops you professionally uh, as well when you, when you get to mentor someone else. Uh, a lot of times, guys, I don't have the answers for what I know uh, my mentee is gonna ask me about. And so I have to study. Uh, it's caused me to read more. It's caused me to do further research uh, into the industry because I know that somebody is going to be relying on me uh, to be the source of proper and wise information. And so I'm studying as well because I know that there's going to be somebody looking to me uh, for those answers. It's really an exciting thing. Uh, guys, there are extensive benefits uh, to mentoring, like I said. It's satisfying. It gains uh, a deeper appreciation. The community that it develops. And that authentic relationship that it develops with uh, that young man, young woman is absolutely outstanding. 
some of the folks that I'm most passionate about uh, and, and that I've been involved in and folks that I've seen uh, uh, do this. I'll speak specifically uh, about the Chattanooga area. Um, I, I believe that the greatest thing that the Gary W. Rollins College of Business at UTC does uh, is the UTC Veterans Entrepreneurship Program. Uh, every year in the summer, uh, a, a group of about two dozen uh, military veterans uh, fly into Chattanooga for an all expenses paid, highly immersive, uh, we call it a boot camp experience, uh, where uh, they learn hands on how to develop their business plan, uh, how to uh, develop marketing strategies, uh, how to uh, read financials, develop financials um, in the business that they're starting at, after. Uh, their active military uh, experience. Uh, I, I feel so blessed that I've gotten to be a part of this program uh, for the past several years, leading them on digital marketing strategies uh, with this group of, uh, uh, of veterans that have served our country so bravely. Um, faculty at UTC are involved. People uh, specifically in the Chattanooga area, but across the country, uh, feed into uh, these, these military veterans uh, from our armed forces. Um, you know, a, a lot of these folks have become lifelong friends. Some of them have become clients uh, of Lyft Media Group, but it's such a wonderful thing to follow their career um, and, and find out what they're doing. Um, I, I get so much more out of it than they do uh, by getting the opportunity to serve them, uh, just as these men and women uh, have served our country uh, as well to a much greater extent than I could ever serve them. Uh, I feel like I'm the winner uh, when I get to be involved in this. And then the Chattanooga Women's Leadership Institute. Um, CWLI is, is, is incredibly uh, active in, in the Chattanooga region um, to place uh, women in decision-making spaces. Um, I absolutely, absolutely love that. Uh, leadership looks different for all of us, uh, whether it's at home, whether it's in the professional sector, whether it's in the nonprofit or government sector. And CWLI's goal is to have more women in decision-making spaces uh, and so it's just as educating uh, for uh, men as it is for women, because uh, business leaders like myself need to understand how to build cultures uh, that are more, uh, that, 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 that place women in those decision-making spaces. And CWI does an amazing job at, at, at training uh, at the career level, uh, whether it's a college membership for my college uh, students, all the way up to leaders who have, have actually recently uh, ended their professional careers and are, are starting to serve as, as mentors. And so the connections that those provide, the, the professional education, CWLI does an amazing job at that. You can learn more about them at cwli.org. Uh, Kim and her team, Caroline on, on the CWLI team, do an absolutely phenomenal job of providing mentorship opportunities and mentee opportunities as well. And finally, the most active way uh, I believe that you can get involved in business opportunities is actually to start your own business. I think there are a lot of benefits of starting your own benefits uh, while you are a professor. Uh, certainly you will bring that real world experience into the classroom, uh, that accountability and that respect that we talked about uh, in the beginning of our time. Uh, students are interested in knowing what's going on besides uh, outside of the bubble uh, of the classroom when they know what you're dealing with uh, at the office. At first, I was afraid of sharing those experiences because I was afraid that uh, my students would think that I wasn't bringing all of myself uh, to the classroom. They actually enjoy hearing about uh, challenging client uh, scenarios uh, that I'm having, uh, you know, uh, issues that we're having in web development or social media engagement updates. Uh, some of my summer students are, are uh, getting to walk with me through uh, the, uh, the, the recent algorithm, uh, Core Web Vitals algorithm update uh, that Google has had and how we're reacting uh, to all of that uh, with, with our clients at Lyft Media Group. Our students are interested in knowing uh, how I'm dealing with those things as they're thinking about entrepreneurship opportunities themselves or thinking about joining a marketing agency or thinking about being involved on in the brand side in marketing too. They really like to know uh, how I'm dealing with this. There is no better way to network uh, than to be a business owner. Uh, there's a certain level of, uh, of, of value that comes when uh, other folks are buying something from you. Uh, you'll gain a lot of professional contacts as you're growing your practice 
as you're growing your consultancy, as you're growing your business, there's absolutely nothing like it uh, to meet more people. I've had clients uh, come into uh, my classroom to speak to my students. Um, it's, it's, it's a very fun thing. I've had competitors come to my uh, classroom, for goodness sakes. I love it when my competitors uh, teach my students at UTC. Um, and uh, and it, it's absolutely outstanding the network, the ways that my network has grown. And it never would have grown any other way uh, but for owning Lyft Media Group. As I shared earlier, I get a special level of respect from my students when they know uh, I'm walking to talk um, on this. They know that uh, I know what I'm talking about because they know that people are paying me money to do this, uh, to be very frank. Uh, there's a new level of respect uh, when they know that I'm doing as in addition uh, to teaching. It also boosts the career prospects uh, of students with your professional network. Um, I've hired former students. I, I, I don't like to have active students uh, working for Lyft Media Group um, for, for obvious reasons, but I've had a lot of previous uh, former students uh, work at Lyft Media Group, work at my clients' organizations, uh, and work for competitors. And I'm able, because of the way that I've grown my network um, in, in the Chattanooga area in the Southeast region, and in fact, across the country as Lyft Media Group has grown, uh, I'm able to connect my students uh, with those uh, professional networks uh, that, I've, that I've grown. And I'll say the quiet part out loud, you'll earn more money uh, than you would just inside of the classroom. It's a great opportunity to, uh, to, to grow your income, uh, to have an outside uh, business outside of this classroom. So I'll talk uh, really briefly and I'd be more than happy to reconnect with a lot of you uh, offline uh, if you'd like to learn more about Lyft Media Group. I actually started at Lyft Media Group uh, as a social media, as a contract social media manager. And as I came on board uh, at, at, at UTC in a full-time role, uh, I knew that I needed broader support for my business uh, that I'd grown myself. I was, like I said, I was on a contract basis with Lyft Media Group and several other businesses uh, to serve as their social media manager. Um, and so I actually merged my business uh, with Lyft Media Group uh, and became a partner. Uh, as I continued to grow in the organization, we learned that other people were much better at being social media manager at, at managing digital ads as well uh, than I was and that I was better uh, in a, a leadership role to help develop our teams and to help uh, being uh, an overseer of, of digital ad strategies and content strategies as well. And so I'm our chief executive officer uh, at Lyft Media Group where I'm, I'm held accountable to the board uh, to oversee our, our big picture vision. Uh, we've grown uh, significantly uh, over uh, the, the past few years. Uh, we grew by about 3X uh, during, uh, during the year 2020 uh, by an active pivot uh, to uh, other digital products uh, and through an acquisition of, uh, of another marketing agency uh, locally. We're even developing new digital products uh, for specific industries. Uh, and these digital products actually were the product of uh, my mastermind group that I, I shared as well. I, uh, we discovered a, a deep need that was unmet uh, for websites in the real estate investment industry, uh, where there were a lot, of, uh, a lot of opportunities with only really one market leader. And so we've developed a new website product uh, to, uh, to go after uh, this industry and to, to serve them well. My students have benefited from uh, walking alongside me uh, in that too. So how can you get started on this? Uh, go ahead and hang the shingle up, guys, uh, and start that website, uh, your, your personal consulting website. Um, go beyond your LinkedIn profile. Go beyond uh, what's, on your, uh, what's on your school website and create a, a, a website uh, for yourself. Um, these are not challenging uh, to build. Uh, identify what services uh, you'd like to offer. I don't keep my, uh, place my, my rates publicly. Um, on all of this, uh, because it turns you a little bit more into a commodity uh, than a trusted resource. But go ahead and hang your shingle. Uh, guys, don't wait until you have everything on board uh, or, or worked out in your head. Some of the best advice I got uh, in starting a business uh, was from a gentleman named Jonathan Podochnik. And he told me, go make $1,000, Ryan, and figure out the strategy letter uh, later. Go ahead, guys, and hang the shingle. Get started. Uh, and, and a lot of your processes uh, will come to you and you can continue to work on those uh, as you're operating your business. But go ahead and get started immediately. 
One of the immediate ways you can get started as well is to reach out to some of the local marketing agencies, uh, hopefully that you've worked with in the past in your classroom. Let them know that you're interested in growing your professional opportunities and see if they have any opportunities to serve them. There is a, a hunger uh, in agencies for contract assistance right now, especially I've seen um, for strategy, uh, for market research, with which so many of you guys are so good at doing through your uh, higher ed uh, research and through the way that you serve students, through the way that you uh, develop uh, your, 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 your lesson plans, things like that. Uh, so many of you are excellent writers as well. And so you've got something that you have to offer uh, to these organizations. Uh, so some of the lowest hanging fruit uh, is to reach out to local uh, marketing agencies uh, that you've already hopefully had connections with as well. Even if you had it, reach out to them and let them know that you're, you're ready to roll. Start a podcast. Uh, starting a podcast uh, is not incredibly challenging uh, and, and does not have to be uh, incredibly uh, expensive. We've done this. Uh, for other educators, I've seen some of my other uh, colleagues at UTC, Frank Butler, uh, one of my colleagues has an amazing uh, podcast that's specifically geared uh, toward uh, helping grow his consultancy uh, career as well. He's done an amazing job at this. And then reach out to your local business development center. Often that happens through your chambers of commerce uh, to, to, to let them know what you're doing uh, and that you'd like to be involved And your local chamber of commerce can help you grow uh, can help you grow your, your business even when it's in your infancy. A few quick pieces of advice, uh, as I know that we're running short uh, on time. You need to really make sure that you're defining success. Don't judge yourself by success of other uh, marketing agencies. You get to define what success is. Are you wanting to grow your income by 10 to 20%? Are you wanting to develop yourself professionally? Uh, are you wanting to connect your students with uh, new jobs and internships? Make sure you understand what success is for you and hold yourself accountable and judge your success by that, not by the, uh, you know, by the profitability or top line revenue uh, of another industry. Identify what your limitations are. Uh, I've got limitations in the form of two kiddos and, and, a, and a wife that I love deeply. Um, and so I know that I've got time limitations because it's just important for me to succeed at life as it is for me to succeed professionally. So identify what those uh, limitations are and stay focused in the classroom. Understand that you can't sacrifice uh, the time spent with your students uh, you know, in, in order to accomplish these things. Now, certainly being fulfilled outside of the classroom is incredibly important, but not when it comes at the detriment uh, to your students. Make sure that your students and your, your university are, are, are getting uh, an amazing version of you uh, in the form of uh, that you're not becoming overly fatigued, that you're not getting burnt out, uh, that you're giving them plenty of time. Guys, I'd be more than happy to answer any specific uh, questions right now. Adam, I know that you're probably connect, uh, collecting a few of these, and I know we're running short on time, but uh, I'd be honored to answer any questions that you might have, guys. Awesome. Thanks so much, Ryan. Great presentation. Loved the tips Thank and you. insights that you had to share. A um, couple of fun facts about Ryan real quick while we're waiting for a couple more questions to come through. Um, Ryan has spoke at ProfCon for the past um, three years. So he came to West Yellowstone and spoke. Uh, we actually went fly fishing together for an afternoon and it snowed in June. That was a fun experience. Awesome. So and, awesome. And um, and he spoke last year as well. So we love Ryan at Stukent. He is a great professor um, and his students love him. Um, the last fact is actually that he has great experience connecting with industry speakers and getting them to guest speak in his class. So he actually reached out to the president of Barstool Sports, uh, Dave Portnoy, and got Dave to come speak to his students for one of the class periods. And we got to tune into that. And it was really cool. So if you want tips about how to get really cool guest speakers, shoot Ryan a DM and he'll help you out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, guys. That, that would have been impossible uh, without, first of all, without Stukent. And without other, uh, without uh, Lyft Media Group's uh, backing, actually one of our competitors, one of Lyft Media Group's competitors uh, locally actually contributed uh, to uh, Dave Portnoy's uh, nonprofit to help make that happen as well, just like Stukent did. Um, this can, this is, a, that's a direct way that your professional uh, opportunities can advance you um, in the classroom as well. For sure. So um, April has a question here in the chat. She said, yeah. 
um, what would be your best tips for finding balance? So there's obviously, um, you know, you gave a lot of tips about how to become a mentor and starting a business and different things. How do you balance all that? It's a great question, April. And I, and I, I appreciate your heart uh, behind that as well, because uh, at the beginning of my career, um, I really struggled with that. Um, I'm an achiever. I love accomplishing goals and I get a lot of value at that. But often that at, that, at the beginning of my career, especially, uh, that came at, at the detriment of, of my health. Uh, at one point, uh, I was working from eight to six at a, at a full-time job. I went home, had dinner with my wife and worked uh, at another job uh, in the marketing industry until about 1 a.m. And if I pulled one all-nighter a week, uh, I, was, I was able to make everything work um, on that. So I was sleeping for about four hours a night plus one all-nighter a week. I did that for about a year. So I understand the struggle. Uh, that you're talking about uh, with that, April. Um, one of the things that, that I've kept in mind on, on this April, and you heard me probably say it uh, a, a time or two in the presentation, is to keep in mind uh, the double win, that you can win at work and succeed at life. And, uh, and, and, and the way that, that I've done that is by embracing the concept of constraints. Uh, I've understood uh, that when I constrain my professional career, when I put constraints around that, it actually makes me more effective uh, because of Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law tells us that work typically expands to the time uh, that we give it. And so when I put constraints on myself uh, professionally, uh, I'm actually able to accomplish more. Uh, so some of the constraints that I have right now, uh, I'll be uh, uh, you know, pretty candid with this. Uh, I leave the office at 445. I don't work past 445 and I'm only allowed one email check uh, after that during the evening times. Another constraint that uh, I've placed on myself is that my family is going to uh, Vermont on a, for a two week sabbatical um, here in, in a few weeks uh, where uh, actually it's two and a half weeks. And for a week and a half of that, uh, my phone will literally not be on. Uh, it literally has to stay off uh, on all of that. I'm constraining myself. Uh, just like basketball would be no fun if you didn't have to bounce the ball. Just like soccer would be no fun uh, if you were allowed to use uh, your hands, constraints make life creative and constraints actually uh, enable and empower you to be better. So embrace those constraints uh, in your professional career uh, and it'll help you find that balance. I really appreciate your question. That was a great answer, Ryan, thank you. Um, here's another question. So. What's the first step that you can take to begin mentoring if you wanted to? Oh, man, what a great question. Um, I'll, I'll start with what not to do, if you don't mind. And then I'll, I'll, I'll work into what to do. Uh, the temptation when you want to mentor is to like spread the gospel and do it to everywhere, right? And, 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 and take on too much. Um, be very, so, so don't take on too much. Uh, in mentoring uh, relationships. Uh, you need to be very intentional uh, about ensuring that these people have a close, personal, deep relationship uh, with you. Uh, one of the ways that I like to, that I found success uh, in that is to do it in a structured way. It took a lot of the, pr uh, the pressure uh, off of myself uh, to come up with like, what am I gonna talk about uh, to these young men, these young women? Uh, that, that, you know, that there needs to be some kind of a structure uh, to it. And so I actually started this through my mastermind program. Um, and so we, we were very intentional about walking very slow uh, with these individuals, usually uh, with my uh, mentoring relationships. Uh, we meet about once every couple of weeks for about 45 minutes. I always buy the coffee um, uh, in, in all of this uh, for these young men or young women. And, uh, and we talk in a very real way. Uh, we, we don't sign anything, but it's a deep personal relationship uh, that we have where we're incredibly vulnerable uh, with, with one another, um, uh, where they share their challenges with me. I share my challenges uh, with them as well. So don't rush into everything uh, and take on too much and do be very intentional with these relationships that you take on. Yeah, I love that. Actually, Stacy Schwartz just had a comment in the chat. She said that vulnerability is key. Um, 
And she had some really nice things to say about you, Ryan. They're all true. Man. Um, it's so true. Vulnerable, vulnerability you, is Stacey. so important. Um, you know, students will turn off when they feel like you're speaking down at them all the time. And like, I know more than you, but if you can get on that same level with them, show them that you care, you're vulnerable, you have challenges in your own business and ventures. Um, and kind of like asking for their advice, like put them in the shoes of a marketing manager or social media marketing manager and, and ask them what they would do. It makes them think Absolutely. critically and it makes them a lot more engaged. So Absolutely. Hey, Adam, can I share one quick thing to, to, to pass? Uh, yeah, to definitely. Compliment, to pass on to, to back to, to Stacy as well. One of the other ways, guys, that you can develop a, a strong uh, mastermind experience, in, in my opinion, in, and professional experience is through exactly what Stacy's doing at Rutgers University. They have an incredibly awesome uh, digital marketing master's degree program that's online uh, that you'll develop connections across the country with. Uh, Stacy has busted her rear end uh, to get this off the ground. Uh, Stacy has uh, immense industry experience, has poured into my life at the first ProfCon that we had um, in, in West Yellowstone and has been an inspiration for me uh, to walk alongside of uh, in higher education as well. So that's another way to, uh, that I, we didn't even talk about uh, is to uh, get some more industry experience through the form of uh, getting another degree. And I think that Rutgers University's uh, program is outstanding. Yeah, totally. Um, what Stacy's done at Rutgers is very impressive. Really cool Amazing. program. Um, awesome. I think we've run out of time, but uh, I did put the Ryan's LinkedIn um, profile um, link in the chat. So feel free to message him. I'm sure he'd be open to um, you reaching out. I also put in um, the Zoom links for the next breakout sessions that are starting here in about eight minutes. So um, make sure to check those out. Again, thank you so much, Ryan. Uh, you, you did guys. an amazing job. Lucky to hear from you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Go Mox. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.